Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to wherever you're joining us from. My name is Joy Zawadi, uh, your host for today's conversation uh, on generation equality. And I have a fantastic panel uh, that's uh, made up of amazing young women. Um, and we're really going to unpack uh, the, uh, the generation equality campaign and specifically diving into the question of bodily autonomy. Joined with me today are my panelists. Uh, we have Kanga, who's passionate about girls and is a self-described seeker of knowledge. I'm also joined by Abigail, who's an educationist, a teacher, and a gender scholar. And last but not least is Judy, who's an aspiring gender activist and is passionate about youth um, and leadership. So today we're going to delve a little bit deeper um, as far as bodily autonomy and how it connects to advancing gender equality. We're going to talk about the importance of comprehensive sexuality education in advancing um, uh, gender equality. We're going to delve deeper into what bodily autonomy is and specifically as it relates to uh, sexual reproductive rights. And so uh, we are really excited to have you here. Uh, please make sure you follow the conversation online, um, tagging Atta Kilidada. And right, we're going to delve right into it. So I'm going to start with, uh, just a general uh, question to each of us. I know all of you are passionate advocates for, for gender equality, but why is gender equality um, important to you specifically? And we'll start with you, Kanga. Thank you for the invitation, uh, Joy. Uh, for me, gender equality is passionate because I believe in the spirit of humanism, of according everyone just opportunities and the chances not uh, cut off uh, because of uh, being of a specific gender, but because you're a human being and you can be accorded different rights. So I'm really uh, passionate about uh, ensuring that everyone is equal and everyone receives equal opportunities. Thank yeah. you, Kanga. Over to you, Abigail. Thank you for having me on board. Uh, for me, I'm driven by the vision of having both girls and boys being able to exploit their full potential in the society without the limitations, more so of gender limitations, so that they can live a fulfilling life. Thank you. And I think that's really important, ensuring that um, as individuals, we don't have any limitations to us exercising our full opportunities. Um, and Judy, you're the youngest uh, activist in our panel. Why is gender equality really critical for you as a young person? I feel uh, as early as right now, um, me being exposed to gender equality and uh, being given that opportunity and uh, that platform to uh, show whatever I have to explore my passion, it will, really, it will really make me a special person. It will really make me a big person in the world. We are, the world is uh, right now looking for solutions, but who are going to provide the solution if it's not the youth? If it's not us who are going to be given that opportunity and that's op that opportunity uh, is supposed to be given with whatever makes us happy. Let us give. Uh, let us uh, get that chance to do what makes us happy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. I think what you've mentioned is quite powerful. That equality is really about having the chance to be happy yeah. and to chart your own course, which is really important for for youth today. Yeah. Um, so let's delve into our conversation. So we're talking about bodily autonomy, but you can't be able to make informed decisions about your body. You're not able to show up uh, in spaces if you don't have the right information. Um, and one of the tools uh, that has been hailed to be able to get us there is uh, the tool of comprehensive sexuality education. So I'll, I'll start with you, uh, Abigail. Um, what's your take of CSC? in schools? Should we have it? Should we not have it? Um, what's your opinion around that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the comprehensive uh, sexuality education, from my own opinion, is that it's a very important, um, it's important course that we should introduce in schools since it empowers both young boys and girls to be able to have the right knowledge, skills, attitude, uh, in relation to sexuality. Knowing that today in this society we have various sources of information and trust me the young boys and girls are getting a lot of information. The question is 
is it the correct information? And that, I believe, is the basis upon which it should be introduced in schools, to give the accurate information to the girls so that they can be able to make the right decisions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that. Um, as you are speaking, <laughs> I want to turn to, to Kanga because um, a lot of parents, um, religious bodies have a lot of fear of CSE. There's a lot of misconception around it. So Kanga, what's your take as a parent? Um, should CSE be introduced in schools? How, how early or how late should it be introduced in schools? Share your opinion. Uh, thank you, Joy. I think CSC is actually a tool that should be encouraged in the case of uh, body autonomy and to advocate uh, just for information because I, w I think uh, being as a, as a parent, I was really skeptical about comprehensive sex education because I used to feel like comprehensive sex education is a sex, uh, sex tool, like you're teaching uh, girls and boys at an early age on how to engage in sex, uh, the, like the issues of uh, contraceptives uh, to girls who are teenagers. But for me, I think the, the, there's power in actually information. So once I realized that comprehensive sex education equips the young boys and the young girls with skills and knowledge about uh, making decisions for themselves. So if you, I am going to engage in, let's, uh, let's say sex, you have like, it has also like skills of decision making where you are able now to look at the pros and the cons when I'm making this decision. So I believe in information, information is power. So when you're making a decision, you are able to know the consequences of what I'm engaging in. So you are able to curtail yourself and actually own up to uh, the consequences. Another thing, I, f I believe that uh, comprehensive sex education is both the parents, the teachers, and the community are uh, contributory aspects of the society. So as a parent in the house, I'll do my sex education. Like right now when you look at uh, the enrollment of uh, uh, kids uh, going to school, it's at four years. So are we, am I going to wait as a parent when my kid is at four years for him to go to school and learn about like uh, age appropriate uh, sex education, like the good touch, the bad touch, how to call uh, your reproductive uh, system? And am I going to wait for a teacher to intro introduce these talks? Uh, delving in on the current uh, situation of uh, defilers and perpetrators, uh, even having uh, defilement cases to girls who are even two years old or four years old. So I believe it's contrib uh, contributory towards uh, every aspect that is the teachers, the parents, and the community, and it is a tool that should actually be encouraged and I'd invite parents to be really open-minded and actually explore what is uh, comprehensive sex education before you bash it and before like uh, putting misconceptions towards uh, comprehensive sex education. Yeah, thank yeah. you, thank you. Um, Abigail, I'll come to you. I mean, you're both an educator and a parent. Um, and as Kanga has said, it's important to ensure that children from as early on as possible to learn about uh, comprehensive sex education. But, um, so I want you to wear two hats. One is as, as an educator, what is, what is CSC? <laughs> you know, if you're speaking to your fellow educators, what is CSC? And then as you wear your hat, as a parent, what do you see are the benefits of CSE being introduced in, in schools? Okay, thank you. So CSC is a comprehensive sexual education that is supposed to be given as early as possible. And um, it comprises of several things. So I think um, most people will be having misconception if they don't know the content. So you'll find that um, CSC as an education uh, teaches students on various aspects. For example, there is aspects of life skills, acquisition of uh, skills such as uh, critical thinking. In the society that we are uh, in, students need to have these skills. Uh, issues to do with self-esteem, um, creative thinking. So the students are empowered to have these skills so that they can be able to navigate in this world. 
Apart from that one, we also have topics to do with um, HIV and STIs. So they are taught on, um, you know that um, HIV is a pandemic, it's us. You either infected or affected. So it is important for our girls and our boys to be able to know ways in which you can get infected with HIV. How can you pre prevent yourself, okay? And if you're already infected, how can you live a meaningful life? We cannot um, live in a society where we ignore the students come from families where they are affected by HIV and AIDS. So they're given skills on these ones. They're also taught on responsible sexual behaviors. Uh, this responsible sexual behavior is not just about sex, it's how to lead a responsible sexual behavior where you have uh, self-dignity, self-awareness about your sexuality. And I teach CRE in form form. We have a topic called human sexuality. And the first statement we say when we go to class is, human sexuality is not about sex. But sex is an integral part of human sexuality. So I think most parents, when they hear the word sexuality, they think it's sex. No, it talks about you are th uh, the thoughts that you have as a sexual being. You know human beings are sexual beings. The thoughts, your attitudes towards it, okay? So here we um, help them on how they can live a responsible sexual behavior. What to do, what to avoid, okay? If you find yourself in this situation, how do you deal with it? So they're given those skills, they're given knowledge. And like we've said from the beginning, knowledge is power. So most parents will think that if you give the comprehensive sexual education to the students, you increase the chances of them engaging in risky behavior. That will not be true. When you're given this education, you have power in your hand. You're able to know, so using now critical thinking, should I engage or should I not engage? If I engage, what are the effects, both the positive and the negative? And then the student now has been empowered to make an informed decision. We also have uh, topics to deal with um, gender and human rights. Uh, I believe we cannot um, continue having policies that are gender blind. We have to bring both girls and boys on board. And we have to recognize that girls have been disadvantaged historically through several ways. And um, it is affecting how they come to interact in the next years. And we know that the economy of this country will not grow if at all uh, people who make almost half or even half than uh, the number of the population are not fully integrated in the economy. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to have, uh, we have topics on gender, where we look at um, the gender stereotypes. We have to um, encourage the girls that you can delve into any career you want. You can be able to be anything you want, okay? So how they can be able to um, maneuver uh, in the workplace. We also make them aware of uh, the discrimination that they may be able to face in the later years and how they can be able to overcome them. At the same time, we give information to the boys to realize uh, this is how, uh, this one you thought it's um, an and, we call it like um, an and, some things that are done to them that they think it's mm. normal, yet it is discriminating against their sisters, mm. okay? So you empower the girls to also be able to, um, to be there for their sisters and also not to continue the practices of discrimination to the girls. We have many other topics. Mm. Of course, we have topics to do with contraceptions and um, we cannot live in a society and we ignore that girls, are, uh, we are having unplanned pregnancies, teenage pregnancies. And I think um, the family or the society was able to see this during the COVID time. Mm -hmm. where we had a report of how many girls were getting pregnant. So the topic, we do have it. And what you need to understand for the parents is comprehensive sexual education is, uh, has different components. One, uh, accurate information. So you have to give accurate information. Number two, it has to be age appropriate. So we don't give contraceptive education to children in primary school. Mm -hmm. it can only, it's actually given in Form 4. And at this time, these girls are living 
secondary school. So they are given that information. At the same time, we have um, the education is culturally sensitive. Mm -hmm. So we have to be sensitive to the culture, the norms of the society, so that whatever is given to the students is as per their culture. So uh, it does not introduce a strange concept of what parents say are strange concepts. Yes. Um, again, it's medically accurate so that, uh, you know, uh, you cannot talk about HIV and you're giving information uh, from a layman's point of view. It has to be medically correct information because these are issues of the society. Yes. So that is what comprehensive sex, uh, sex education that we give in schools. Thank you. And thank you for unpacking it so richly because I think a lot of people, again, have very high level information that doesn't really share what it is. And indeed, as all of us have had, it's quite comprehensive and it's really about empowering that young person to lead a life that is or make choices that are really um, informed. And even just the, the depth of it, I'm impressed, you know, when I was in high school, we didn't do, in CRE, we didn't touch those topics. So, and I really love that also we are introducing the, the right aspect of, of it. So thank you very much for uh, unpacking that. Okay. Judy, I'll come to you because you're a beneficiary of CSC in, you know, in its current uh, format. So maybe you can just share um, in your experience what have been the, the benefits of having this knowledge um, of having access to this knowledge. And also, I'll add another question. If you are to advise policymakers, teachers, parents, what else can we do to ensure that we increase even the access to this information from, a, from the perspective of a young person? Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that um, having CSC as a part of a subject in school like it will really make people, uh, both boys and girls, develop their passion in different ways. Like uh, as for me, it worked. I that's where I realized that I have, as in, I, I I'm able to like talk in front of people. I'm able to confidently address issues affecting other girls uh, who cannot be able to like reach out to the teacher and tell them I have this and this problem. So like the teachers used to engage uh, the students yeah, through most of the confident girls in class. So having CSC as a subject will really make different girls and different boys develop their passion, make them feel um, useful in some way. Um, you know, you, they say that you have power lies in your hands. So whenever you have that information, you have the power to decide whether I'm going to use this information for my benefit or I'm just going to let this information just sway away. So like, um, for me, it worked because uh, that's where I knew and I got to learn that I'm able to like be assertive. If I'm not ready to do this and that, if I'm not ready to have a boyfriend, if I'm not ready to date, oh yeah, if I'm not ready to date, if I'm not ready to have sex, I'm assertive enough to like um, speak it out. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm a, I'm assertive enough, and uh, I'm also able to like tackle issues and challenges affecting other girls. In, in such topics, it's not necessarily going to like um, just expose your children to sex. You know, mm -hmm. even if you just uh, tell them that uh, learning this kind of subject will help, will make you like, um, will help you, like, will make you feel like you're into sex. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily it. Uh, it really makes you know whatever like is there for you outside mm -hmm. and even in school and. Uh, I'd really like to um, encourage even the policy makers, the government, the teachers. You see, like when you're having these public hospitals, try and engage the youth to like be part of the counseling department. Mm. You see, if I'm, I'm a youth and maybe I've engaged myself into uh, sex, so like I'm go, um, I, w I want to like get better medical attention or I want to seek advice. You see, like if I'm going to a parent, that parent first of all will, will look at me as a daughter and say, and will maybe at some point will, will start telling me that it was not the right thing to do. They'll start bringing regret. But if I'm having a youth, a fellow youth, it will be easily f uh, for me to like open up to them and tell them this, is, this and this happened to me. Maybe it was rape. You understand mm -hmm. so it won't be easy for a parent like to understand you 
more than more than your fellow youth mm. yeah yeah i i really love that because you've you've really um painted the picture of what a youth youth friendly services looks like and i like that you've also drawn the the parallel with, with between the importance of fast having csc and how that empowers young people then to seek youth friendly services and it's true you know nobody wants to be judged when you're seeking support for anything and so um i i believe that everyone who's listening to us uh, some of them may be policy makers we really take into account the importance of having those youth friendly services and more importantly even having young people themselves lead that process yeah so i i i, I really uh, love that uh, abigail you look like you have something to add on there before i go to the <laughs> next the next question maybe i can just say um some topics she was talking about like uh, making decisions mm. there's one topic uh, we really have to emphasize on communication communication the communication skills negotiation skills and decision making skills these are the skills um in comprehensive sexual education that empowers the students very well mm. so when they are confronted with a situation like when to have sex if they decide mm. Um, so someone is asking them for sex. How will they be able to communicate no? How will they be able to be assertive enough to do that? How will they be able to negotiate? You know, someone is telling you have sex with me. You say no. Then you're like, you're ready, you can. No, I'm not ready because of one, two, three things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I absolutely love that, you know, the importance of communication, negotiation and decision making uh, skills, because it's not just something that will apply to, um, say, those situations that are surrounded around sex and decisions around making sex. There are skills that they can transfer to other elements or other That's parts true. of their lives. So it's, it's, um, it's uh, I'm loving this conversation. Let me just say that. Um, so let's go to... Uh, to the, the two of you, uh, both Kanga and Abigail. Um, we've talked about the importance of CSC. We've heard how valuable it is to young people. How can parents support its implementation? Um, from your perspective, what can parents do? Um, how can they educate themselves around this topic? Let's just hear your, your take on that. I think as parents, it's first and foremost important for us to be open-minded and actually like to, not, uh, to, like I think, evolve also with time and be involved in our children's uh, education. Because in as much as we talk about comprehensive sex education being introduced to the schools, as I said earlier, it's a collaborative effort between the, t uh, the teachers, the parents, and the community. So uh, uh, from the home, you're doing your bit about uh, comprehensive sex education. Then in the school, can you be involved like in the process of the curriculum? I liked how Abigail was uh, n uh, naming the topics that they introduced, like the communication, the assertiveness, uh, like the gender uh, topics, how many parents know of these topics? Are we interested in the curriculums that are actually in the school? Have we had, in as much as we say no to comprehensive sex education, do we know what is in this curriculum? Then I'd also encourage the schools and also the policy makers, like when you're introducing a curriculum, do you have like a sit down with the parents to actually say, these are some of the topics that we are introducing to the schools and it's a value addition if you involve the parents. So in as much as we are introducing these uh, topics in schools, what, can you, what is your role as a parent as you go home? Because in as much as we introduce the topics here in school, then at, uh, when the children go back to home, it's laxing, then we are doing a disservice. In school, they are going to behave in a certain way, but when they go home, there's laxity. They're also going to now uh, conform to what is at home. So both of us, if we are collaborating, we're able to enhance uh, the issue about communicating, the issue about negotiating and all that. Then also, as parents, I believe in the spirit of just knowledge sharing and 
getting as much information as you should. So in as much as there's these misconceptions that comprehensive sex, edu sex education is about sex, what do you as a parent take it as? Have you gone towards like the teachers? Have you gone through uh, the several curriculums are there to actually look at the content of this curriculum before you actually say no or yes to it? Then lastly, it's having communication with your children because in as much as they go to school, they're your children first. So we have had cases of girls who have been defiled and boys who have been sodomized, but they didn't go first to their parents because they felt that their parents would judge them or their parents would react in a certain way. Are you forming a relationship with your children so that they are able to talk to you if they're having issues or even if somebody touched them wrongly or if somebody discriminated against them, are they able to speak uh, to you as a parent? Because in as much as your parent, let's foster a relationship of being friends with our children and that aspect of in as much as I'm your parent and there's that authority, you can also be able to come to talk to me as a friend. Another thing is being very conversant with like terms that you're using even in the CSC. I like the aspect of uh, comprehensive sex education of naming the parts of our body as they are. Because you might get uh, a child is being defiled or a child is being uh, touched misappro uh, misappropriately, but because of not, the child not having the correct terms, they end up saying things that shouldn't be what you are actually thinking about. So can we encourage one another to be open-minded in saying things as they are and being direct so that if something is an issue, we are able to address it there and then and move on or and even help this child to adjust and also to feel like there's a support system amongst them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kanga. That's uh, quite powerful and I think it's, I love that we are also um, sharing the responsibility with parents because uh, particularly in this country, in Kenya, it's almost like the responsibility for all kinds of education is, is uh, loaded on, on teachers. And I love that uh, even as a parent yourself, you're bringing us back to where, where's the responsibility for the parents? Where's the, the, how can they be able to also play a critical part in empowering uh, the, the young people. So um, Abigail, just hold on to your thoughts for a minute. I want to come back to, to Judy, because as, as Kanga was speaking, I was thinking about how can we as um, adults be able to support young people in accessing CSE? Because you know, we have our own perspective. We think it should be taught as a subject in school. But is there maybe another way that we could be able to address this or to deliver CSC? I'm just curious to hear your, your thoughts around that. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, as adults, I think the best way, uh, because just like uh, we all know, charity begins at home. So like first of all, try and reach out to your like eldest, maybe daughter or son, and then like the daughter or son will be able to pass it over to the siblings. Like if my mom, for example, my mom has been very supportive ever since she got to learn that um, I've been a leader all through in school. She has never told me like, don't be a leader. Uh, it will make you fail in school or something. She has always told me, go and follow your passion, your dream. And um, I came, whatever I was taught in school, whatever I was taught in CRE, most of the CSC, like parts, I came and taught my, my younger sister, she, she's in form two. So I used to tell her this and this and that. And my mom was supportive and, tell, uh, and used to tell her, and she always tells her, listen to your elder sister, because th these are some of the challenges that are, you're really going to face out there. You see, like when parents are very supportive, try and understand your kids first, their weaknesses, their strength. If you're going to teach them this and this right now, are they going to be able to understand it right now? Is this the right time to like tell them this and that? 
um, try and engage them in more useful activities, not only in YouTube, such things, and try and um, just give them your experiences, your, like, this is, a, this is how you and my dad did this and that, and this is how we came up with this solution. You see, mm -hmm. like, they're learning, they're learning, try and engage them in such activities, give them that platform, uh, the platform and the privilege to joining different organizations out there, and um, just having that peer and uh, uh, peer to peer education and talk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I absolutely love that because, um, you know, I remember growing up, everybody's parents were number one <laughs> because nobody's parents wanted to share about their failures. So the fact that you're, you know, you're encouraging us to share our experiences, the bad decisions, the good decisions, um, what we learned, I think that's quite powerful. And also the importance of platform, giving young people that platform. And we applaud your mom for, for supporting you. So um, as we wrap up this conversation, we'll come back to you, Abigail, and just maybe comment on how we can complement uh, uh, young people, um, even as we think about how parents can create uh, supportive environments. And then we'll come back and do our, our parting shots. Okay. So um, like we've said, parents uh, should start the conversation as early as possible and um, they should make um, time for their children. So a teacher cannot replace a parent at all times. So be available. Um, parents are encouraged. When you go back uh, home in the evening, sit down with your child. Ask how was school, what did you learn, anything, what happened outside as you were playing. Have a conversation. From this conversation, you'll be able to pick maybe some good traits that you should encourage or some bad behaviors that um, uh, your children will tell you we did this as we were playing uh, this and this hit this other then take that opportunity to uh, discourage those behaviors also um, as you're watching TV because most of the time you find families TV um, time is a um, uh, time when students get as uh, children get to pick so much information if there is an advertisement for this thing and that, and a child asks you a question, don't shoot it down. Take that opportunity and explain to the child, depending on the age of the child. Um, give them the correct information. Now we come to the teachers. Uh, teachers, again, uh, you'll find that um, in these topics of uh, comprehensive sex education, it again depends on the teachers themselves. Uh, the personality, they also, you know that um, topics to do with sexuality are a taboo in an African society. So even mentioning some terms in class may be very difficult. Um, delving into the comprehensive education uh, becomes very hard. So maybe the government together with a civil society should also undertake training for the teachers giving them um, the skills on how they are going to teach well the topics. Because again, teachers are authoritative persons in the society. And they spend more time with these students. And they know some behaviors of these students. So they should also uh, take uh, teachers for training. We should ha also have capacity training for the teachers. Um, and then teachers themselves also should try to be approachable if students are going through issues and you're not approachable, they will not tell you, okay? So when also you're in class, they should be able, uh, when they're teaching mathematics and something arises in that class, take that opportunity. If it's about HIV and AIDS, discuss with the students, give them the correct information. But teachers will not give the correct information if they don't have. So again, they have to be trained. And the other challenge you find is, um, like we've said, it is being taught in some subjects that are examinable, mostly biology and CRM, which is not very comprehensive. The other topic is life skill. It's, we focus uh, sexual education on life skill. Life skill is not examinable. And we know our education system that we depend on grades. So I'll, as a teacher, I'll be more interested in teaching a subject that uh, is going to be examinable because that is what will matter for the student. And therefore we give little time to topics that are not examinable like life skills, which is a very important topic. 
So probably uh, the stakeholders should think of a way in which um, they can be able to bring life skills examinable so that we can be able to have more time in, in it. Um, generally, we should all approach this topic with an open mind and get as much information as possible. People are, will shoot it down if they don't know. So everybody get on board, get to understand what is sexuality and take um, your time to teach the young people the correct information so that they can make correct decisions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abigail. I think you've wrapped up the conversation beautifully for us with that call to action for everybody to get informed and educated um, and to contribute to creating this progress. So I want to thank all of you for the amazing conversation that we've had. We are taking a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Thank you.